Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. This is Jay Rocks. I have the honor of being the CMO of Hyper, and it's a pleasure to be with you today to discuss the rollout of the great white papers that are coming and to talk a little bit about the implementation of task keys. Now, I'm going to take a slightly different approach to the overall story. And instead of looking necessarily at any one piece of the technology, I wanted to look instead at the equally hard question of how do we actually get this technology deployed out into real world environments. But first, let's start by reiterating the sorry state of passwords that we see today and the business case that we all need to build in order to be able to make any of these changes. I doubt you'd be here today if you weren't already feeling the pain of passwords. And the key is how you convince your organization and the lines of business within your organization to commit. Let's take a second and review the scorecard. We know that 60% of every breach continues to come from failed authentication, passwords, and legacy MFA. And that's causing organizations every year more up to $3 million. It's actually more than that in the US. And the situation is getting worse. We're seeing how easy it is to purchase the materials to run a push bombing attack online. And really, you can purchase it for $150, $300 a month, a little bit more than that if you want 24 by 7 tech support. It's amazing to me that the attackers face the same support challenges that many of us in technology organizations do today. And another important stat to call out is, for those of you who think you're secure, you may really not be. Only 3% of the organizations that Hyper surveyed who thought they were using, password, using phishing resistant passwordless methods had actually made that transition. The nice thing about passkeys is they guarantee that you're receiving those benefits. But if the answer is passkeys, what's the question? Why are people making that transition? What's intriguing about the research that we ran is the reasons that people are moving to passkeys is really divided across a number of different characteristics. And let's be honest, most of the organizations are looking to move beyond the experience that they're giving employees today or customers today. User experience is going to win every single time. One of my favorite examples of this was a hot selling item during the pandemic called a mouse jiggler. If you haven't seen one of these, I really encourage you to go on Amazon and take a look at the reviews that one of these gets. It's a very simple device, stick it into a USB port, and the only thing it does is simulate the mouse moving back and forth so that the screen doesn't actually lock. I was telling this story to a CISO at a fairly large organization, and she looked at me and said, that's amateur hour. The only thing I do if I want my machine not to lock is start a movie playing on my phone and put my mouse on top of it. And then, so, Fundamentally, driving towards that improved user experience is the reason that many of, many of you, many of these organizations are looking to make the transition. And the nice thing is, depending on how you implement, you can actually decouple authentication from some of the underlying infrastructure and give employees a truly common experience across all of the apps that they have. If you look at the stats on the previous slide that I showed, many organizations have four different authentication flows that they're expecting users to run each day. But in some ways, making the technology shift is the easy part. A great comment that I heard from an organization going through this transition is the tech is easy, the people are hard followed by the conversation that the two scariest words in the English language could be change and management. While passkeys are that rare opportunity for security teams to both improve security and user experience, that doesn't come without challenges. So the papers that 
FIDO is releasing this week and we're talking about today gives some great detail on the trade-offs of selecting the appropriate degree of security and the security challenges associated. I want to take a slightly different approach and focus on how successful security teams are handling the organizational rollout of PASCI and just talk through three case studies for three key learnings for organizations who have deployed both synced and device-bound passkeys. The first step of this is obviously the overall migration strategy. It's a key part of nailing the budget, timing, and training requirements as a part of making this transition. And success means not being shy about your requests in this area. One of the organizations that we worked with allocated five times as much budget for the internal transition campaign as they did for the solution acquisition. That's obviously the extreme end, but it's something to keep in mind. The other thing to start thinking about is who are your champions? Who are the blockers within the organization that you need to worry about? One multinational CEO that we worked with was the one who actually filmed the demo video of logging in with a passkey based solution, which was a powerful incentive for those employees who were inclined to be laggards. So let's keep in mind three key areas of focus. What's your marketing strategy for convincing employees that they want to adopt? When are you going to be, try and bring them on board gradually? And when are you simply going to lower the hammer? Who within the organization needs to be involved? And how are you bringing them along on the journey? And this is obviously at more than the executive level. How are you supporting the line managers? And what are the stages in which you're going to roll this journey? Who are your test groups, your early adopters, and the early majority that you're moving forward with? Looking at our first use case, I want to talk about a supply chain technology leader who had 1,500 employees scattered around the globe and really felt that haveibeenpwned.com knew more about the security posture of their passwords that they were able to gain internally. They moved due to some very real security concerns. And it was a five month transition from the organization from project inception through to being fully passwordless. The first test group that they ran was pretty much the obvious people. You bring on board IT and security, and then you phase two was expanding to the finance team because IT and security actually reported up to finance. The success here ironed out some of the bugs and gave them some great internal champions. But the most important part of this, and the reason I selected this as a case study, was that they ran a tremendous internal marketing campaign. From the start of phase one, they were communicating to the organization the need to make this transition and warming up the employees to the changes that were going to happen. Once they started the campaign, they made it so that you couldn't miss the upcoming changes. Signage, articles in the company newsletter, transition fairs hosted in the office. And one of my favorite is they gamified the adoption. They made the transition so that if you made the transition and entered, you could win a prize. It doesn't even need to be a big prize. And importantly, they made sure that everybody at all stages of the transition had success. There was a heavy investment into hosting office hours and providing dedicated support. And before somebody could become a detractor, they invested in making sure that that person succeeded. And it was successful. They went fully passwordless in the first month with more than 90% of their applications and were able to carefully monitor the support volume and show where it had declined overall. Now, I'm a recovering developer who became a professional marketer. And one of the things that still continues to surprise my, my rational brain is the number of things people will do to get a cheap piece of swag. I showed this in my logo as to not violate the company's privacy, but they also invested in these types of investments. And trust me, table tents and cozies don't cost a lot. And by creating things that people will 
use and driving pervasive signage, it really became a, gave a feeling that the transition is inevitable and ongoing. The next case study I want to talk about is also somebody who moved to device bound passkeys. And it's a global manufacturer with 70,000 employees in almost every country and region in the world. And that global sprawl means there's a bunch of people in offices, many of whom are tech savvy, and a bunch of people out in the field who don't have the same degree of sophistication. In fact, many of the people out in the field never came into the office. This caused a lot of real issues with onboarding, where it could take up to three weeks to get an employee on board and successful. And doing a global rollout in this environment takes a lot of prep and engagement with the leadership team. At the end of the day, the organization had the backing from leadership to make managers responsible for the rollout to their teams. So they ran the same type of communications campaign we talked about a minute ago, but HR drove the overall rollout, but individual managers were accountable for making sure that this happened with their teams. It really addressed a lot of local issues. Managers should be able to articulate why this change matters, but it also created areas that were pushed back from managers. It also created areas where managers pushed back on it. And it was only through office hours, engagement, and pushing similar to what we saw previously that they were able to get managers to fully engage. However, once the managers did engage, they were able to show it was a surprisingly simple experience and I love the quote on this slide that compares registering to implement passkeys as being as simple as daily hygiene. The other best practice and one to consider as a part of implementation is where people need choice in their environment and how, in how they're authenticating. For many environments, there are people who can't or won't use a personal phone and few organizations want to give corporate issued cell phones to everyone. And one of the benefits of the FIDO standard is that organizations can provide a choice of the authenticators. In this case, they were able to issue security keys to people for whom running, a, um, running this on their phone wasn't an option or couldn't be an option. One part of rolling this out globally was they found that for a lot of the less expensive phones made in China, they don't even come with a trust, trusted platform module on board. So traditional authentication was not an option. The organization was successful in the transition to passwordless and recognized the benefits mostly in how it impacted their employee experience. Employees were able to fully engage with their benefits, their payroll, and their online learning in a way that helped to unify office-based workers and field service workers. And the final deployment that I wanted to talk about is an example of deploying synced passkeys to consumers. This is a company in the retail healthcare space. And obviously, organizations in that environment have a lot of questions around PII that they need to protect while providing a higher level of customer service. And the rollout process for this organization was very fast and demonstrates some significant factors in terms of driving successful enrollment. The security team had really strong support from their line of business, which viewed improving the user experience as a key driver to commercial success. And that support is obviously essential in making any rapid change. They also implemented a testing program that was rapid and impactful. They offered the ability to roll in pass keys to 10% of everybody who logged onto the site in a given month so they could iron out the bugs and improve the overall user experience. They chose to put the option to create a pass key right in the user logon flow. It isn't what's recommended by the FIDO user experience working group, but it worked for this organization. And due to the support from the LOB and the early testing, they were able to turn on the option to enroll in pass keys for all customers coming to the site in only a month and had more than a million users signed up in six weeks. So at the end of the day, I'd like to leave you with three things. First off, this is a sales and marketing job. 
There's a lot of work that we'll discuss today around choosing the appropriate type of passkey and the appropriate form of implementation. But changing people's beliefs and behavior is hard and will be at least as much work involved in the process. It's going to require frequent dynamic communication, early, in, early successes and opportunities for people to engage. And we covered some of the best practices in terms of running physical and virtual campaigns to ensure that the transition is successful for every employee. It's also important to remember that leadership and direct manager communication is successful, in, is, excuse me, is essential. In any organization of size, the people who are on the front lines are going to be the only ones who can make this succeed. And what we all know from any degree of change management is this is a journey. There's going, we need to bring both the organization and all of the employees or all of the consumers along on this transition to pass keys. So thank you. And to echo what Megan said a few minutes ago, I'll look forward to seeing all of you at Authenticate.